Audrey, thank you for this opportunity to talk to you and uh, thank you for supporting Ukraine. We really appreciate it. And let's start. Um, uh, Audrey, tell uh, us about Ivan's experience expanding services for citizens through digital uh, technology and uh, which other countries are leading the way? Well, uh, Ukraine with the DIA app is certainly leading the way and showing the world the government in your pockets with a mobile phone. In Taiwan, we have very similar apps also, the National Health Express app, which covers all our citizens and also residents enabled us to counter the pandemic without a single day of lockdown in the past three years. Uh, but the great thing about this uh, co-creation is like in Ukraine, our citizens who have design or civic tech proficiencies work with the government to co-create even better digital services. The tax filing experience used to be very painful, nobody liked to pay tax, uh, but was revamped uh, thanks to e-petitions good ideas from the citizenry. So we institutionalized that. Now every year we run presidential hackathon. More than 200 teams participate, and five teams each year receive a trophy from our president, Dr. Tsai Ing-wen. The trophy is a projector, when you turn it on. Um, should I do that again? <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe I should do that again. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. So, okay. All right, so. <coughs> So I'll just answer. Of course, Ukraine uh, with the DIA app is a model of the world on how citizen participation, in addition to service delivery through the mobile phone, can enable all the citizens and also residents to contribute. In Taiwan, we have the same. Our universal health care, the National Health Express app, counts more than 10 million of people uh, doing contact tracing, mask rationing, all sort of vaccination and so on on the app so that we were able to counter the pandemic for the past three years without a single day of lockdowns. And the experience of even filing the tax and so on are revamped by contributors from the civic technology um, community so that we can co-create better services. Every year we run the presidential hackathon which counts more than 200 teams from domestic and abroad to co-create better digital services and the winner, five winners every year, get this presidential commitment to turn their small-scale experiment, small apps like telemedicine and so on into national-scale deployments within the next fiscal year with all the budget, personnel and regulatory support. You mentioned our, did, uh, our application DIA, like mm -hmm. action in Ukraine, mm -hmm. and uh, how can you rate it? Mm -hmm. okay. you, you saw it, yeah. this application. Yes. Tell us yeah. about this. Yeah, uh, we paid very close attention. Uh, not just DIA, but before DIA, there was Prozoro, uh, the open procurement uh, platform uh, for anti-corruption, better participation, and international communities because around 2014, we were pushing the same agenda in Taiwan for open procurement and contracting and so on. So we joined each other's forces on the open government partnership, sharing the toolkits, including the hackathon, well, not presidential hackathon, but certainly uh, in Paris, right, in the president's office. Uh, and so all this connected our people-to-people -people ties, our civic technology communities together. And so when the DIA offered a easier to deliver form of such services, we were very excited. Thank you. And what lessons in Taiwan learning from Ukraine in uh, combating cyber attacks and disarming disinformation? Um, so I remember uh, when the Kiev uh, situation happened, uh, the start of the brutal war uh, from the Russian side, I stayed up all night checking not just Twitter, but also uh, Kiev Independent and many journalists on the ground during their reporting. Now, imagine if there's no internet connection uh, in Kiev at the time, then people will still have the same appetite for information. But all they will see is probably deep fakes, propaganda from Russia and things like that. So the number one lesson we learned is that we must provide broadband communication through whichever means to all the journalists, including civic journalists. And that is uh, why we invested more than 15 million euros over the next couple of years 
into non-geostationary uh, orbit satellite receivers. We'll build more than 700 of these receivers, uh, some fixed, but some also mobile on the ground, on a truck, like we have seen in Ukraine, uh, so that they can power it itself, maybe through solar panels, and receive the satellite internet, and then relay the communication through 5G towers to nearby towns and journalists, exactly as we have seen in Ukraine. Mm. Great. And what are the key factors driving the development of information and digital technology in Taiwan? Two things. One is called broadband as a human right. So no matter how remote you are, maybe very rural areas, remote islands, even the tip of Taiwan, the Jade Mountain, almost 4,000 meters high, uh, you can still live stream. You can still enjoy uh, the broadband internet uh, for just 15 euros a month, unlimited data. So this is a human right. The other is called digital competence. So all our school children, uh, junior high school, senior high school, they learn about not just media literacy, which is when you read, but also competence, which is when you write and produce. So they participate in measuring air quality, uh, to debunk rumors about air pollution, to find out the actual pollutants, uh, to fact check the three presidential candidates as they were having their debates uh, leading toward the 2020 presidential election. And if the student found a typo or an error or something that's not factual, their name may appear uh, on the broadcast. So working uh, toward collaborative fact checking or co-facts that's an important civil society endeavor that many other jurisdictions are now also learning from Taiwan because our code is open. It is open source public code. And I would like uh, to um, ask you about uh, how, uh, about Taiwan, uh, Taiwan's experience, how to protect personal data and digital services. In Taiwan, we rely on very advanced encryption mechanisms to protect personal data against cyber attacks from malicious actors. Nowadays, there's this idea of Web3 uh, and the idea of zero knowledge uh, sharing, which means that I can prove to you that I am over 18 years old uh, and therefore eligible to vote or buy liquor or things like that without actually disclosing my age to you. Uh, and so it is now possible to compute over private data without actually looking into the private data. It's called homomorphic encryption. It requires very powerful chips, and pretty much all the advanced chips toward that uh, goal is manufactured in Taiwan uh, by TSMC and friends. So we're contributing to a new era of privacy-enhancing technologies through our chip manufacturing uh, prowess. And we also work with the international Web3 community uh, when we suffered a cyber attack that threatened to deny our website of service uh, this August, we work with the interplanetary file system or the IPFS community. So anywhere in the world, including in Ukraine, anyone can donate their spare hard drive and connectivity to pin our MODA, M-O-D-A website on their hard drive and therefore uh, help us to stay afloat even if we suffer uh, more than 30, um, I'll do this again. I think this is too technical. Um, okay. okay. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'll explain in simple terms. Um, so no one is an island, not even Taiwan. So to defend against cyber attacks, we work with international community. Now, uh, anyone in Ukraine, anywhere in the world, can donate the, some of their spare hard drive storage to pin our website to defend against the denial of service attacks. The likes have never been seen uh, in this early August, uh, 23 times higher than the previous peak. And also we manufacture through TSMC and the supply chain, the chips for advanced encryption so that people can compute, that's to say train AI and so on for the public good without actually looking into any of the private data. And this requires very advanced chip making capability that Taiwan is happy to share with all our democratic alliances. Yes, and um, Russia's brutal war of aggression against Ukraine has garnered global headlines. How would you describe the local media's coverage? Local what? media coverage. Uh, coverage. Yes. Uh, yes, local media coverage. Um, I think all the local media, regardless of their partisan affiliations, consider Ukraine and Taiwan very closely bound. 
uh, I think we are all on the front line facing authoritarian expansionism, brutal expansionism. Uh, and when, for example, uh, a young um, soldier uh, from Taiwan um, joined the Ukrainian um, armed forces uh, to defend, um, it was widely covered uh, in Taiwan. And everyone feel uh, the need to pay more attention to what's actually happening in Ukraine, uh, because as I mentioned, we share the same uh, situation. And since the very beginning, uh, when the uh, call to sanction TSMC chips uh, against Russia and so on was started, uh, I think everyone in Taiwan understood uh, that this is not about market access. This is not about earning GDP or things like that. This is about, um, as I mentioned, because advanced microchips are used not just for science, not for just for public good, but also for uh, crypto analysis, that's to say attacking on the cyber attack front. Uh, denying access to the most advanced chips is essential uh, in defending democracy. Uh, and so I think this is the angle that most of the Taiwanese media is viewing this conflict. You know, uh, you mentioned uh, Jonathan Tsvenk. Uh, Tsvenk mm -hmm. is a soldier who mm -hmm. f uh, fought in the uh, Ukrainian war. And uh, for us Ukrainians, he is a hero. I really appreciate And my last questions. In what areas can Taiwan help Ukraine? So during the recovery uh, process and the rebuild processes, Taiwan has extensive experience because we suffered around the turn of the century a huge earthquake. And we also participated in the relief and rebuild efforts following the even larger earthquake uh, in Japan. Uh, and so in many ways, digital can connect people who are in different time zones together as if we're in the same room, as called co-presence. And so through these skills, uh, we were able to provide high quality education health services, public services, to even our most remote islands, despite the disconnect uh, physically. I think in a digital world, vicinity is measured not by the kilometers uh, on the map, but rather by the shared values that we all cherish. So as a fellow signatory to the Declaration for the Future of the Internet, the DFI, uh, we signed, when I signed um, on the video conference, uh, the. Uh, Rectangle next to me uh, is Fedorov. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, we are uh, signing the same declarations uh, protecting the human right and resilience of the internet. And it is through the internet that Mo, that the Ministry of Digital Affairs, can deliver uh, the kind of services that we already enjoy here in Taiwan, that we have experienced following a recovery, and we are standing ready to help. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you. Thank you.